One of the most common tools in electrical work, especially for us DIYers, is a non-contact voltage tester. It is super convenient to just turn this on, get it close to the wire, the receptacle, or the light switch you're working on, and to see if the power is cut off so you can safely work on that. The only issue is depending on what brand and model you're using, there could be a safety issue that you really need to be aware of. So let's jump into that and make sure you're doing your electrical projects safely at home. So the model that I've been using for years is an NCVT-3 made by Klein Tools. There is an issue with this design. So when I turn this on, it does a small check. You see a few of the LED lights flash. You see the blue light indicating power and that's it. So now I would go and I would actually test my receptacle and it would show a red LED and also audible alarm if there was voltage detected. So what could be the problem? What could be the confusion? Let me do a quick demo where I'm going to test a receptacle that has power still on and I'll test that with two different non-contact voltage testers made by Klein Tools. They have a little different functionality and that difference in functionality highlights the safety concern that we're talking about. So the first one up is the Klein Tools NCVT-3. We'll power it up and then test the hot side of this receptacle. So it's accurately detecting power on the hot. Now let's try the other one and show you. Now this is the NCVT-3P made by Klein Tools. Again, accurately detecting the hot side. But what is the key difference and how can that lead to the safety concern? So that might have been pretty subtle and you didn't really pick up on it. So let's take a look and turn both of these guys on. So both of them are in the on state and now it should be a little more apparent difference. So the dash three P is on my left hand side and this is the dash three. The three P is a newer version I just got and it has the green LED which is a strong indicator that the power is on and the voltage tester is testing for voltage. Then once you get it closer to a hot live source, you see it turns to red or blue depending on the voltage. Now, if you look at the dash three, nothing, you don't have the green. Now, if you get it close to the voltage source, it will start giving you the audible alarm and the LED. But the biggest problem is with this version and some other versions that are out there from different brands, it's easy to have what's called a false negative with this type of non-contact voltage tester. And that means in this on state, you see a little blue LED, but in the off state, it is extremely similar. So let's say you're a standard homeowner, you use this maybe once every six months, maybe once a year, your batteries go dead. So you turn it on and it turns on for five seconds, 10 seconds before you actually test the receptacle and then the batteries drain out, it turns off. Well, you're not gonna know the difference. You're gonna think it's still on, you're gonna test, you're not gonna get the audible alarm, and you're gonna think that receptacle or light switch or wire has been turned off, you, cor you hit the correct circuit breaker, but in fact, your non-contact voltage tester just is giving you a false negative because it doesn't have any battery power. So you need to be careful on which one you're using and make sure that you understand the operation of that non-contact voltage tester. Again, with this, dash 3p it's easier because you always have that green led that's indicating i have power and i'm ready to actually measure that circuit small change but can lead to a lot of issues when you're testing your circuit let me know in the comments if you guys or yourself or others that you know have actually had that issue where you got a false negative went to start working and then got bit or injured because the circuit was still live but what are some other options out there? Well, if you're working on a receptacle, I think it's a no brainer to have some form of outlet tester. Why would you have that? Well, these are not battery powered. This is a cheaper version made by Commercial Electric. 
And then this is a little more expensive one made by Klein Tools, but it also has a GFCI tester so you can make sure that the GFCI is tripping properly. Additionally, when you plug these units in, it has three LEDs that will light up in different combination, showing you if a receptacle is correctly wired or showing maybe you have an open ground or an open neutral. It helps you to start diagnose the issues. These are very common in home inspections and this is also how they quickly pick up if you do not have a ground going to a three prong outlet. So I do think it makes a lot of sense to pick up an outlet tester if you're gonna be doing electrical work around the house. And you can see in the description, I'll have the links to the ones I recommend, which I do recommend having one with GFCI, a GFCI tester, which you can get for as little as $10. Then if you really wanna step up, which is gonna give you a lot more capability, you would go with some form of digital multimeter or DMM. Now this is a relatively cheap one made by Klein Tools. The nice thing is this is gonna be allow you to measure the exact voltage. So are you getting 120 volts to that 15 amp receptacle? You can also measure at your light switch or are you measuring a lower voltage which can indicate some type of wiring issue in the circuit. But if you're gonna get a multimeter, I'd also make sure that you have a resistance check so you can do continuity checks which come in very handy, but I also would make sure it can measure capacitance. Now this came in handy for one of my rentals not too long back where I was able to measure a capacitor that was lower than what was expected in terms of microfarads and then I was easily able to troubleshoot that and fix the issue just because because I was able to measure it opposed to having to call in an HVAC tech. So if you're gonna get a non-contact voltage tester or maybe you already have one, go check that and see if you have the functionality where you have some type of strong indicator saying that I have battery power and the non-contact voltage tester is ready to actually be used and accurately measure the voltage in the circuit. This is something you really wanna be proactive on and make sure you understand your tool and how it functions. That's it, let me know your guys' comments. Have you ran into this issue in the past? Do you know anybody that actually got hurt because they used a non-contact voltage tester and it gave them a false negative? They started to work on the circuit and it was still hot. But if it's not too much trouble, don't forget to hit that like button before you take off and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as we have multiple videos coming out per week to help you with repairs and improvements around the house and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.